It's how do you elevate the customer experience? So when you think about that value exchange with the customer, it's really providing a better experience in your digital means than over your kind of traditional, you know, uh, call center or retail store, et cetera. Because when you think about it, self-service is the way you can, like, there's no wait. You can actually get some things done quickly, you know, in the comfort of your own home. Not everyone makes the news, but behind every growth-driving experience, product, and transformation are experts who shape the outcome. Welcome to Behind the Growth, a podcast for digital leaders and those aspiring to become one. Each episode features a candid conversation with a remarkable individual. Join us as we focus on their struggles, wins, and lessons learned you won't find anywhere else. Let's get started. Welcome to Behind the Growth. I'm your host, Mudassar Malik. And today we're celebrating Ryan Chong, Senior Director, Digital Service and Support at Rogers. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. I've, I've seen your, your past guests and I'm really, uh, really excited to have a conversation today. I'm sorry, kind of you. And I'm sure we're going to have a great conversation. By the way, let's kick it off. I love this sentence on your LinkedIn profile. It's about yourself. I thought it said everything that you're a geek that moves mountains to innovate and drive results. I'm sure there's a, there's a whole journey behind it and would love to share that with us. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I would say I'm, I'm a geek because, uh, you know, in my core, ever since I was, I was a kid, you know, using computers back in the day, I've really always been passionate about technology. So I've been fortunate mm-hmm. in my career to really be able to use technology to make things better. And that's why I would say I'm a kind of a geek that moves mountains and is willing to go through everything you need to do to launch something in, in a corporate environment. So at the start of my career, I actually started in the call centers. So that was really, I would say my, my true post-secondary education in, in mm-hmm. customer experience was actually talking on the phones, helping people for about five or six years. That was really my, my kind of true education of this is what it takes to have great customer experience. I then moved on to a very different role, which was in process engineering. And to me, that was the foundational element of growing and doing analytics. And really, from a very tactical level, how do you prove things, show value for it? My next job was actually on the opposite end of the spectrum, was kind of very high level and self-serve strategy role. So then it's like a, a top-down approach where you translate an executive vision into strategic pillars and then how do you execute it, get executed across. And then really that role turned into a digital role where it's kind of self-service, start growing mainly in the digital space. And I was very fortunate to actually then start really using my passion for technology because there was website self-service. And then I really started getting into, into mobile. And that was such a growing area. Um, yeah, absolutely. worked on some of the first HTML5 sites, um, where we launched Roam Like Home and, and yeah. kind of changed the game for, for travel in, in Canada. Yeah. And to me, that was when my real, my real passion really, yeah. really sparked and for experience. Cause when we first started, I was like, okay, it's a mobile oh. site. It's not the same as a desktop. We actually have to think differently about how we build these sites. So I remember bringing in like a travel suitcase and giving it to people, give them a phone. It's like, can you activate this using one hand while you're walking? Because oh, that's that. how people do it in the airport. So we yeah. had to really rethink what we're doing, then got into mobile mm-hmm. apps. Mobile apps was definitely key for us. And then where I spend most of my time and energy today is in the AI and virtual assistant kind of chatbot space that's been such a huge area of, of opportunity and, and growth and i think it's been key for you know, a contributor in the self-service space for the past few years and will continue to be in, in the future so it'd be quite a journey of growth with the with the technology but i love it like you know what if what a classic foundation you you were always into technology uh, which is now everything now pretty yes. much and then your foundations were set out in in the customer and the customer experience of it so yeah. wow man that's i love it but i'm sure it's been full of challenges also, a lot of struggles, a lot of lessons. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's always the, you know, my journey there, there was a lot about the hard skills of customer experience, analytics, strategy, and, and being able to put that together, you know, with some business school tied in. But for me personally, I think a lot of the, the growth was with really like having some self-reflection and understanding what my weaknesses are and, and really working on those weaknesses. I think if you were to ask me, say five years ago, hey, Ryan, what's your, what are your biggest fears? It would have been something like public speaking, clowns and spiders, like public speaking would definitely be at the, at the top. 
So I hear you. You're not, you're, yeah. at least you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, definitely clouds are scary, but <laughs> yeah, like, like public speaking, I, I was always struggled with it. It's something where I really had to work on and work on my communication. And that really helped me in, in my career. It's just assessing where I have the weaknesses, shore up those weaknesses, and then also kind of surrounding myself with, with people that are strong in, in different areas. And then shifting that mindset to becoming a leader, which in my mind meant not just focusing on my individual accomplishments, but creating that environment where the team can innovate and, and succeed and being that supportive leader. That was really what, what drove the, the growth for me. Fantastic. That's a great story, man. Thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like you, you've given more than two decades to the telecom industry and you've seen a lot. And so I'd love to you know, hear from you. What have you seen over the years? How the digital customer experience and especially in the self-serve space, like how has it evolved? Yeah, it's, I think it's evolved a lot. I think in the beginning, early days of self-service, almost like anything else in a, in a business, it's all about how can we cut costs? So it's how do you like reduce your unnecessary contacts, reduce your operational costs? I think what's really grown is the perception of self-service. So yes, foundationally, it's always going to be one of your key business drivers for, for optimizing, you know, your costs, but really it's how do you elevate the customer experience? So when you think about that value exchange with the customer, it's really providing a better experience in your digital means than over your kind of traditional, you know, whether it's a, you know, a call center or retail store, et cetera. Because when you think about it, self-service is the way you can, like, there's no wait. You can actually get some things done quickly, you know, in the comfort of your own home. I think it's, it's like a natural thing for customers to do because they're at home, you know, watching TV on the weekend. They could do whatever transaction they need to do and they kind of go back to, to the day versus, you know, calling it and waiting on hold or, or lining up at a, at a store. Yeah. But I think you, like you said, it might have started off as one of the cost efficient ways, which is naturally what it is. It's, it just saves a lot of cost to the organization to manage that call or have them think, but it's also a customer demand now. Like, yeah. you know, you, you want to have that kind of uh, intuitive experience and that self serve that you don't want to be trapped down into anything or getting hold of a company. So you really want, it's now demanding from a customer perspective, it demands a lot of you, right? Yes, for sure. And I think, I think a lot of those advancements in technology has led to that shift because it is a much more convenient way to react, interact with the customer. And I think just the mindset has, has shifted even from a customer perspective. I like to like think about all the universal transactions you could do with a company. If you plot them on something like a value versus complexity matrix, the things that are low complexity, regardless of the value, those are the things that you should self-serve and automate. But there's always going to be a set of highly complex, highly valuable transactions, valuable to the customer, valuable to the, to the company. We actually want some human interaction there. And that's where you know, we can apply the technology in different ways to actually help the person that's uh, handling the customer and not really deal with like, improve that experience. They, the focus should be on creating that customer experience and less about playing with their tools and, and finding the right, right things to do to service the customer. That's a fine line between how, how lost you want to be in technology and, and what's the outcome. Of yeah, right? exactly. So I think that's a perfect segue. And I was thinking that on, you know, you, you've been leveraging tech for, you know, for the longest time, with, you know, to help business objectives or customer needs. And with generative AI now in picture, how do you see digital landscape changing or the impact of it? Yeah, I think the generative AI, it's, it's, it is a game changer. I think out of all the innovations over the past, two decades, it's probably the one that's going to accelerate things the fastest. When you kind of get to any interaction with a customer by a digital means, you like for the past, you know, two decades, it's been okay, click on things, tap, let's optimize that experience. But now it's a two way conversation. So the customer will tell you exactly what they want. So you can actually map out that customer intent. So, and that's really the, the game changer is that it enhances the customer experience because they're telling you exactly what they want. We're getting faster with personalization. So you can create those one-to-one -one experiences through your AI and your personalization. And then I think it's also a game changer in, in terms of things like, you know, ChatGPT got a lot of buzz. So it's actually creating that new interaction paradigm for customers because when we first launched chatbots, people would put in one word things because they think that's how you trigger 
you know, a response from the chatbot, or you'd kind of have those little suggestion buttons. Yeah. More and more, we're seeing people put long form content into a chatbot and just putting oh, on a full you? sentence. Yeah. And there, there's, oh, wow. it's because of things like ChatGPT, people are starting expecting yeah. that. So right, right, you have right, to actually it's have now to change in that nature and how they can, yeah, it's, oh, wow, it's, that's it's changing a new, a new paradigm in interaction. And, and really it's, it's the speed, the speed at which you can innovate and create new experience with AI. That's what's really changing. I think traditionally, you know, every company is just like, oh, but try something, you know, crawl, walk, run. I think, you know, I, I like to prefer it to, you know, quote kind of Jay-Z and Kanye on their album, you know, watch the throne. You need to crawl before you ball. So yeah. like, yes, yeah, it's like, I always tell my team, yes, do the POC, yeah. but very quickly, we gotta, we gotta yeah. scale up, get the value. Yeah. So you, you don't have time to crawl, walk, run. You gotta crawl and then kind of ball out. It's a race against time, man. Like yeah, that's literally exactly. how it's going. But I love that insight, you know, like uh, with, with all the prompt uh, design and prompt engineering and everything. And I think that yeah. habit is changing and I think you're seeing it. That's, that's, yeah. that's incredible. That's incredible. Very cool. So, okay. I think also, uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of talk about whether this technology will stay or whatnot. And like voice assistant, you know, I, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but it's, it turned out to be a bit of a fad. There was a lot of hype, didn't really follow through as much as was anticipated. So. Any other technologies or something that you feel will follow suit? Yeah, and I agree with you on the on the voice assistants. And I think we as like kind of companies, we kind of got that interaction paradigm wrong. And I was fortunate. I, I talked to one of the product owners for one of those devices. And really, people only want to do three things on them. It's, you know, listen to music, uh, set a timer, and ask what the weather is. Like maybe a little bit of kind of smart home automation. Yeah. But when it, when you kind of think about where we try to take that next beyond those is that companies, and I could see why, you know, a tech team would do it. They probably took their existing APIs for self-serve and let's throw a voice front end on it. And let's, let's try to replicate, like, you know, pay your bill with like, you know, on a, on a home smart assistant. I, I kind of liken that to back in the early days when grocery stores tried to get into self-service. So when they first started, they took the cashier experience and they just kind of replicated it one to one. So you had to like scan everything put in the codes for your bananas, beg it. But, you know, we've all had trouble with like, oh, if you moved something, oh, you got to call someone over for assistance. Like the... Gets me every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, it, it's almost to the point where it's like, I'd rather not. I'd rather just go to a regular <laughs> cashier because this, this, it's a worse experience. Yeah. And I think that happened because they didn't really rethink how to do that journey interaction. And I see that happening a little bit today with kind of the, the voice spots where you, you grab a team like, hey, IVR team, replace your IVR with a voice bot. And they kind of put that same mental model of, okay, an IVR onto a voice bot. To me, I think that's not necessarily the, the right answer. It's actually, how do you rethink that experience? Maybe you add visual and voice together because certain things are just too complicated to do purely over voice without, you know, some visual assistance sometime on that, on that interaction. So to me, it's really rethinking versus just kind of replicating experiences one-to-one -one with new technology you're not going to advance that way yeah well said i think well said and but i also see there's an opportunity now like with voice coming back into open ai and you know yep. bringing in and you know there's always going to be that chance and i like it how you connected the dots to saying voice plus a visual avatar or something something more interactive yep. as a hologram or whatever it is like you know those things will <laughs> with all the network and things who knows man like we've got to play yep. around with their imagination here yes for sure for sure very cool Okay, so Ryan, but in in all of these, like you know, I'm sure there's there's been uh, certain projects which you've you've really enjoyed out of these things, and but I'm also curious and what your vision looks like for the future of digital self serve. You know, you've been heavily invested, you've been building up a lot, you have a lot of history. Give us something. What what do you foresee here? Well, I, I mean, probably like, probably the AI robots are going to take over at some point. But <laughs> yeah. just kidding. But you know, before that, you know, all the movies you kind of reach that utopia state and what would self-service be in that that utopia state i mean i think for companies and you know just to get a little bit academic uh, for a bit if you take you know a business model canvas and you, you look at everything you need to do for your business you know your cost of suppliers your logistics etc i think over the long run all of that is equal with your competitors it, it's a zero game except for one piece which is kind of the value prop and really the core component in your value prop I think is going to be your experience. So it's the one differentiating factor for companies to have an advantage over your competitors. When you think about 
experience and today's world, the majority of your touch points are going to happen in the digital space. So if you're not having an advantage, creating a great digital self-service experience, you're going to be at a disadvantage to your competitors and you're going to lose out in the long run. So really that's the, the future uh, of self-service is the technology that powers it to create great experiences. That's going to be the deciding factor, whether you win against your, your competitors. Do you really see like a ma massive shift? Like there, there's so much with AI driven into that. So, so let's unpack a little more. Like, you know, what would you help us like understand a little deeper on this one? Yeah. And when I think, we think of going back to kind of value exchange with the mm -hmm. customer and really what's that value prop. Mm -hmm. To me, with AI, understanding intent, understanding customers as an individual, everyone's overly busy these days. I don't think that's going to mm -hmm. stop anytime soon. Yeah. So really the most valuable thing you can give to your customers is time. So with AI recognizing intent, the really the ideal salsa experience is going to be the minimal amount of time you take away from the customer. People forget that customers don't wake up to call you or use your website every day. They want to go on with, with their lives. They want to use your, your product or service mm -hmm. and kind of the, the self-help part of it should be mm -hmm. at a minimum. It should only be key things. Do they, do they need to make a key decision? Maybe you go proactive and just pop that decision up where you know, they, mm -hmm. they want to pay for an extra add-on or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the, the future self service is, mm -hmm. is you're actually saving customers time because that's the most valuable commodity that people, people have. And that's what people will truly appreciate. Yeah. How, how would you think about, like, I, th I think there's a very common sentiment by customers where they feel that, yeah, there's, there's too much of self-identification that needs to be still done by them, right? And the anticipation is that, you know, and it's across the board, pretty much every industry vertical struggles with how much you really know about the customer before they're, they're really having a conversation with you. And they don't have to explain themselves again, or they don't have to refer just because the, the systems are not integrated within themselves. So they're different business units who've been orchestrated that way, right? So you, you've seen those things in the market. A lot of yeah. companies struggle with it. You know, I'm just thinking that at what given time will we really hit that level where it really becomes that experience that we've always been envisioning and we wanting to go for, right? So as yeah. a general perspective, as you as a consumer also, just reflect on it. What do you feel like? Do you think that's ever going to be the case we achieve that? Yeah, I think so. I think... Realistically, I think we're on the cusp of it. Okay. I think we've put so much data out there about ourselves where we, people were tracking us. You know, we have all the new cookie rules, et yeah. cetera. But yeah. there's all this data that exists about us, but yeah. we've never had the, the means to actually properly process that and create a one-to-one -one experience. So when you think about all the data that's out there, it's been inconvenient, but now we're at the point where generative AI can really quickly summarize that information it. and then like we get action on it. So, you know, open, a, like something like open AI could actually take by, you know, past year of interactions with the company and probably summarize it into, you know, 200 characters for a person to read and be like, okay, yes, this is what, this is what Ryan needs. He's, he's ready for a new iPhone or whatever else. Like that's the, the technology advancement that's going to catch up to just to all the amount of data that's out there is being able to process it and then actually use it for proper insight and, and action with, with people. Right. Yeah, you rightly said, with the cusp of it and exciting, crazy times where we have the technology to help achieve that. Going back to you, would you change anything about your career, about how your journey's been? Like if you had you had a chance, is there something that you would like to pivot somewhere or no? Probably, no, I, I would say no, because going back, you always say, oh, I, you know, I, I should have taken a different job or, you know, gotten ahead of the technology or, you know, invested in a certain stock type of thing. But I think the early parts of my career where I did struggle really taught me how to be a leader. I wouldn't change those things or trade off those experiences because those, the hard times is, is really what shapes you and kind of forges, forges the resilience in you to kind of keep going and, you know, ultimately find that, find that success. You can't really have just success without going through, I think, some of the more challenging and difficult, difficult situations. Thank you for saying that. I would not change, if I were you, I would not change that life. You know, having a love for technology and then having the depth of customer understanding, man, that's a, that's a, that's a magic situation. Thank you.
Uh, Ryan, I'm sure a number of our listeners want to connect with you. What you recommend? Where should they reach out? Uh, yeah, reach out on, on LinkedIn. I think if what I've said resonates with you, if you want to innovate with, with purpose and, you know, join me, I always post all my, my roles there. Or if you just want to connect and have a conversation, please reach out on, on LinkedIn. We'd be happy to chat. Love it. Innovate with purpose. That, that was a f- fantastic sign off. Ryan, thank you very much for making the time and joining us today. It was a pleasure having you on Behind the Growth. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Behind the Growth. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow along on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. This podcast is brought to you by Mobile Live, a team of digital experts specializing in designing experiences, building products, and scaling technology. For more episodes of Behind the Growth, please visit mobilelive.ca slash podcast.